Hello everyone, this is Food Poison from MGS and welcome back to another video! Today, we are doing another tutorial. Another tutorial about OBS and how to implement face rig to OBS. And one of the reasons why I'm doing this is because, first off, I actually switched from the OBS Classic to using OBS Studio. And also, there still is a lot of questions about how to use face rig on OBS. And there's all these questions that I wanted to answer, so I wanted to make a video about it. Okay, so let's begin, let's begin. First off, uh, we have to first know how to even find uh, face rig on OBS. Uh, as you guys can, as some of you guys have troubles with, um, you guys don't know where to actually find the face rig's video, the video driver. I'm just gonna move myself right there. And uh, the thing is, in order to find it, you have to go to your Steam folder. Um, so in my Steam folder, is in my PC, uh, storage, this, this is my E drive, and this is in Steam. Uh, so for some of you, it could be on your C drive, if that's your main uh, main drives. If you don't have multiple drives, it's usually C. So, from here, you want to go to Steam Apps. Uh, you want to go Common. And from here, there's all these either games or programs that you have installed in your Steam. And for, uh, I will have to go find the F, which is face rig, and go to the bin, and go to the driver, or no, not, not driver, go to the pre, uh, prerequisites. And from here, you will see all these things where, uh, well, all these prerequisites that you, that face rig requires for you to run or have, uh, have, features on or run functions on and from here what you need is the face uh, the face virtual cam driver is in here i would assume that most of you already have windows 10 by now but if you guys don't there is still 7 and 8 compatible for you guys uh, you just have to run one of these according to what you need and it will start working and from there uh, what you will notice is i'm just going to drag this one over here now what you will notice from there is that you will finally see uh, face rig camera when you do um, ah, when you do a where is it video capture device and when you do a video capture device uh, I'm just gonna name it face rig by the way this is the Windows Studio so it may be a little bit different if you guys are using Windows Classic. I realized that the studio does a bit more than what the classic can do. Before it wasn't like that, but it kind of surpassed the classic for me so that I made a switch and I am pretty happy with the switch. Um, now in the devices, you'll see um, these two things. You, you probably at least see two things because you have to have a webcam in order to use face rig. Um, unless you're not using the tracking, any, any of the tracking. But you will see your webcam and you will see your face rig virtual camera. You may have to restart the computer. That could be, um, that's probably, if you don't see it, that's probably why. And I'm just gonna say okay. And you'll see that it can be moved all the way around here. And that is exactly what we want. Now, for my my video person my videos and my streaming I usually have my face all the way down there for in order for me to do that I can just drag the drag the top left corner or top right corner it doesn't really matter where you go uh, you will you can resize your face and I'm just gonna be doing that and I'm just gonna put it right like maybe just for I, I'm just gonna put it not not too small because I still have a couple things that I want to show you guys now I just gotta do that. And now about the whole background colors. So in your face rig, if you want to change any kind of background, you will have to go to the advanced UI, which is the button that you click in order to get up there. And from here, you will choose the environments. Now from here, you can go through all these environments if you want to change your environments into these. But for me, what I do is pick the, pick the 2D environment there and go to the customization. And in the customization, if you go to the backdrop, you can change the color to what you want. Now, the reason why I don't do a green screen is because my eyes and my and my scarf over there are they're both green, so I can't really I can't really do a green background color because what's gonna happen is uh, it's it's going to it's going to green screen out my eyes and my neck, so it's gonna I'm gonna look like I have my head chopped off, so I can't do that, and my eyes are like transparent. So what I have to do is 
pick another color, another extreme or basic color, which is uh, like red, it could be blue. Those are usually two grid colors. Um, I think you could also go magenta, but that's a little bit different. But for me, I go blue. And from here, uh, I just choose blue, and that's pretty much how, it, how I get here. And in order to kind of show your whole face, you might look like this a little bit. You just have to press Alt and scroll. And yeah, that's pretty much how you set up most of the stuff on face rig. And so I'm just going to close that out for now, or minimize that. And from here, we will do this right here. And uh, to, to make it into a green screen effect, what they call it is not really green screen effect, but chroma key. Um, it is a bit misleading if I do call it like that at the moment because I realize that what works better than a chroma key at this point is to just do a color key. Now in the f uh, in the classic, in the classic, I just I just simply did a chroma key and I did a customization, select a color, pick a color, and just so do something like that where I click the background, it takes the color, but it kind of kills everything. Um, chroma key. Is it works a little bit? It works a little bit. It like actually works pretty good. Uh, <laughs> the reason why I used color key before is that I didn't have any customization effects, and so I usually just use the color key instead of the chroma key. But it seems like it is working pretty well. Uh, I don't really use the smoothness or the spill reduction because that kind of makes it more transparent and uh, compared to actually taking the stuff out. And it seems like this is working pretty well actually. And I'll actually show you what I wanted to do before is the color key. And the, the way I do this one is actually pretty much the same where I do pick a screen color and I click and I press OK. And I just change the similarity. For this one, it kind of goes up. And they have a, they both have a very similar effect. Um, re it really depends on what you want to do and how you want to change it up for you. And you can see that if you go too much similarity, then you will start becoming a ghost. You don't want that. So you want to you wanna have a good medium um, to get most of the blue out or most of any of the background color out without making yourself a ghost. And I'll show you I'll, I'll show you just of the smoothness. If you do smoothness, you, you start becoming transparent. You don't want that to happen. Um, I'll have to change that into chroma key after this. But yeah, um, there's contrast and brightness that I'm not too sure if you guys want to touch on too much, but it is still there for you if you guys need it. And there's the opacity, which clearly is just, just making yourself a ghost. That's pretty much what it is. So I'm just going to use the chroma key for now. And that is pretty much it. You guys can, after that, resize into whichever or however size you want. Um, I do it all the way down here, which is not bad, which is all good. But yeah, this is mostly what you guys have been asking about, um, how to find the virtual camera, how to do all of these things in studio. And um, other than that, I really wanted to show you guys how to kind of reduce the CPU or the reduce any kind of resource usage when you're doing this because a lot of times what you'll see is that when you start a game after your after you set up all your face rig and you start a game it started lagging either either face rig starts lagging or the game starts lagging or the recording itself starts lagging and that's that's something that I've been really working on for the last two years as as, as I was working on face rig and um, the what what it really comes down to is hardware, and it's just really difficult because if you're playing a really graphic intensive game, something like uh, Overwatch or graphic intensive game like like The Witcher per se, you really can't use face rig and hope for hope for it to not lag because it just uses that much resources, and for you to be ha for you to have all those resources, you need hardware, and that just means that you just need a better computer, and maybe you need better parts. You need stronger parts for sure. Um, I've recently I've recently upgraded to a, a GTX 1080, and it's been helping me um, just go go through a lot of uh, smoother sm uh, smoother recording, um, especially for even even intensive games like For For Honor, and those really help out. <laughs> like good good hardware definitely helps out, and I realized that a big like a crucial part. A crucial hardware part is definitely the graphic card uh, when you're trying to record everything. 
And your CPU also takes a hit, but probably not as much. But if you do want to go through um, even more like graphic intensive, even CPU intensive games, then you probably will need a uh, better CPU as well. Now, just to kind of remedy a little bit of how you should, how you could uh, get this working better is if you go to um, the settings right there with the gear, if you go there and if you go to performance, uh, you could technically lower the FPS, uh, which could, which, which obviously drops the FPS of your face motion. But I, I usually like to keep it at 60 because it just doesn't feel real enough if it if it's lower than 60 for me. Um, I heard that 48 could work also, but that really depends on how you guys feel. And you could also do it to a low priority process, which which makes it so that the CPU or any other resources uses their pro their, their resources to run the other thing, other major things such as the game or the recording. And then with the remaining resources, it will run face rig. You will see if you're running something like pretty graphic intensive, then you will see face rig lag. Um, but at least the game and the recording probably won't. But I do like to keep that as, I do like to keep a good balance of that. So I just keep that off. And what you could also do is if you go to graphics, this actually helps a lot where you can change the quality of face rig. Um, one big thing is that you can change the resolution. Um, you may be running it at 1920 at 1080 or anything a little like maybe close to that. But if you guys do want to lower it as I have, I have it at 720. Um, the reason for that is because my face is already pretty small down here. I don't have to have the whole thing covered up like the 720 that the my videos are usually 720s and I don't have the whole need to have the whole face covered up. Technically, I could probably go like 540 and then I still could go through my my uh, my videos. And the reason why I do that is because it uses that less like that much less resources. Um it's it uses like yeah, that like that much less. Um it could be taking this whole screen instead of taking this whole screen. Whoa, is sticking there. It could be taking the whole screen, but I'm only making it so that it's displaying out of this small screen. And that really helps out. And the smaller you go, the less resources you're going to use. And that's just better. Uh, that will probably help a lot with your just uh, just working on the, uh, the videos or streaming. And if you guys don't have the hardware for it, and you could always change the fur quality, I believe the skin, sh uh, the shading quality also takes a lot, takes a lot out. And there's just all these things that you can mix and match and find your balance. And yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, if you guys do have more questions about what to do in like in face rig, what to do in OBS, um, I will try to answer it to be to my best of best abilities in the comments below. Um, if you guys if you guys do ask something that's like repetitive a lot, then I will try to make a video for it and show you guys how to do it more, um, like more on a step by step basis. And hopefully that will help you guys out and hopefully that will help you guys record and do more streaming without showing your face. And that is the best thing that I can see out of this whole thing is because I started all of this because I want, I didn't want to start, or I didn't want to show my face and I do understand how difficult it could be for you guys. And that's why I'm here to help out. And yeah, that's pretty much it guys. If you guys do have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. Thank you for watching the video. If you guys enjoyed it or if it helped out, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you guys haven't already or if it's your first time here. It really helps me out when you guys do that. And with that, thank you guys for watching once again. Have a great day. And I'll see you guys in the next video.